Falcon's Fury is a freestanding sky jump drop tower attraction at the Busch Gardens Tampa Amusement Park in Tampa, Florida, United States. Manufactured by Intrad Ride, a subsidiary of Intamin, the ride reaches a maximum height of 335 feet, 102 meters, making it North America's tallest freestanding drop tower. It is also the first drop tower to use 90 degree tilting seats facing riders straight down. Riders experience about 5 seconds of free fall, reaching a speed of 60 miles per hour, 100 kilometers per hour. The ride's name was chosen to invoke a falcon's ability to dive steeply at high speed and capture prey. The project had been planned to start in 2012 and open to the public in 2013, but was delayed one year. Construction began in 2013 with a scheduled opening date of May 1, 2014, but the opening was delayed due to mechanical and technical issues. Falcon's Fury opened to park employees in August before a soft opening on August 16th, 2014, and had an official opening on September 2nd, 2014. Quick Facts, Falcon's Fury. An image shows the logo for Falcon's Fury and the ride in operation. Busch Gardens, Tampa. Area, Pantopia. Status, operating. Cost, $5 million to $6 million U.S. Soft opening date, August 16th, 2014. Opening date, September 2nd, 2014. Replaced, Sandstorm. General statistics. Attraction type, Drop Tower. Manufacturer, Intamin. Model, Sky Jump. Theme, Falcon. Height, 335 feet or 120 meters. Drop, 310 feet or 94 meters. Speed, 60 miles per hour or 97 kilometers per hour. Site area, 3,600 square feet or 330 meters square. G-Force, 3.5. Capacity, 800 riders per hour. Vehicles, 1. Riders per vehicle, 32. Duration, 2 minutes. Height restriction, 54 to 77 inches. 137 to 196 centimeters. History. A photo shows Falcon Fury's tower. Planning for Falcon Fury began around the time the park completed its Cheetah Hunt ride in 2011. Ground tests in the Timbuktu area, now known as Pantopia, revealed interesting soil conditions, with steel beams and concrete required to reinforce the site. Rumors that Busch Gardens Tampa might replace its sandstorm ride with a 200-foot, 61-meter drop tower surfaced in the fall of 2011 when its sister park, Busch Gardens Williamsburg, opened Mock Tower that August. Construction surveying was observed in January 2012. Two months later, plans were filed with the city to build drop tower possibly for the 2013 season. Speculation about the new attraction's name began when SeaWorld Parks and Entertainment, owners of Busch Gardens Tampa, filed trademark applications for Desert Dive and Falcon's Fury on May 2nd and July 11th, 2012, respectively, and bought the, uh, bought the DesertDive.com domain name. When permits for the new ride differed from those uh, for Mock Tower in uh, November 2012, rumors began that the seats would tilt forward. Due to the height of the attraction, approval from the Federal Aviation Administration was required. According to the FAA and the City of Tampa, the tower was supposed to be built in December 2012 and opened to the public in 2013. For unknown reasons, the project was delayed with its construction pushed back to the second half of 2013. On May 31st, 2013, it was announced that Sandstorm would close on June 2nd to make room for a new attraction. About two weeks later, on June 11th, Busch Gardens Tampa announced plans for the Falcon's Fury, and construction began that month. During the fourth quarter of 2013, the park drove steel piles for the ride's foundation nightly for about a month. 
On September 20th, the tower for Falcon's Ferry was shipped from Spain in nine sections, arriving at the park near the end of October. The ride's smaller parts had been delivered earlier from several European countries. Installation of one of the nine tower pieces was planned for every other night, with the last place piece in place by New Year's Eve. Construction was done by Adina Corporation, and on November 18th, the first piece was installed. The ride's second piece was installed December 2nd, and two more were installed December 6th. The fifth section was placed by December 21st, and the sixth was erected by New Year's Day. The seventh tower piece was installed by January 3rd, 2014, and the eighth by January 5th, reaching a height of about 300 feet, or 91 meters, and Falcon Fury's gondola was seen at the park on January 12th. The ride's counterweight was installed on January 22nd, and the tower was capped during the weekend of February 1st. Work on the ride's electrical components then began. Assembly of the gondola was completed by the end of March. Testing was originally scheduled to begin in February, but due to construction delays, the first drop tests were not made until April 15th. The tower painting began in June with its sunset motif estimated to take 60 hours over a three-week period. At the end of February, Busch Gardens Tampa announced that Falcon's Fury would open on May 1st, and on April 3rd, the park began a sweepstakes contest for its Falcon Fury First to Ride Party. A second similar contest began on April 11th, with 50 winners from each contest being among the first riders. A week later, the park announced that the ride's opening would be delayed, and several media events scheduled for April and May, including the First to Ride Party, were cancelled. It was later disclosed that the delay was due to a manufacturing and technical issues with the cables which pulled the gondola up uh, the tower. During the week of August 10th, Falcon's Fury opened for park employees. On August 16th, the ride soft opened to the public, and two and a half weeks later, Falcon's Fury officially opened. Ride Experience Falcon's Fury has two shaded queues, a standby line which can hold guests for about 45 minutes, and a quick queue for guests with passes that allows them to bypass the standby line. Although the quick queue system will not initially be used for the ride, it may be added later. Riders must be between 40. 54 inches, 137 centimeters, and 77 inches, 196 centimeters. When the riders are seated, a catch car connects to the gondola, and it raises to the top of the tower, which takes about one minute. Although the tower is 335 feet, 102 meters high, the gondola stops 25 feet, uh, 7.6 meters lower. When it reaches the maximum height, the seats tilt toward 90 degrees, facing the riders straight down with a computer ram randomized wait time from 1 to 5 seconds. When the wait time ends, the gondola is released from the catch car into a 5 second freefall, reaching a maximum speed of 60 miles per hour, 97 kilometers per hour. As the gondola passes through the pre-braking section, the seats rotate back into a horizontal position. After the uh, pre-brake, uh, the gondola enters the magnetic brake run, where riders experience approximately 3.5 Gs as the gondola slows. When it comes to a full stop at the base of the tower, the riders disembark. On one cycle of the ride, it lasts about one and a half minutes. Also, Busch Gardens Tampa placed an Easter egg in the form of a painted Falcon's Fury logo on top of one of its buildings, which can be seen only from a certain side of the gondola. Characteristics The tower and gondola were manufactured by Interide, a subsidiary of Intamin. The ride covers an area of about 3,600 square feet, 
330 meters square. Tower. The Falcon's Fury Tower is 335 feet, 102 meters tall, the tallest freestanding drop tower in North America, and can bend 3 feet, 0.9 meters, in any direction from the top to withstand hurricane force winds. The tower is composed of nine sections, including the machine house. Each piece of the tower weighs up to 105 tons, 103 long tons, 116 short tons. And the entire structure weighs about 519 tons, 511 long tons, 572 short tons. The 77 tons, 76 long tons, 85 short tons machine house at the top of the uh, contains four DC motors used to lift the gondola. Inside the tower is a 68 tons, 67 long tons, 75 short tons counterweight composed of hundreds of lead weights to help raise the gondola. The tower's foundation is made up of 105 steel piles varying in depth from 75 feet, 23 meters, to 205 feet, 62 meters. A 138 foot, 42 meter eddy current break system on the tower slows the gondola after its free fall. The structure is painted yellow, aqua, and two shades of red. Gondola. A photo shows one of the ride's eight groups of seats. The ride's single gondola has 32 seats grouped octagonally around the tower. One of the eight sides seats four riders, and each seat has an over-the-shoulder restraint and seat belt. Falcon's Fury can theoretically accommodate 800 riders per hour. Carbon fiber wings buttress each end of a group of seats, protecting the outside rider's arms and legs during the drop. The gondola reaches a height of 310 feet, 94 meters, 25 feet, 7.6 meters below the top of the tower. When it reaches its maximum height, uh, the seats tilt 90 degrees forward with the riders facing the ground. First, This is the first use of this feature on a drop tower. Records. When Falcon's Fury opened, it became North America's tallest freestanding drop tower. Although the drop taller drop towers exist on the continent, such as Lex Luthor Drop of Doom at Six Fa Flags Magic Mountain and Zumanjaro Drop of Doom at Six Flags Great Adventure, which reach Heights, drop heights of 400 feet, 120 meters, and 415 feet, 126 meters, respectively, those attractions were added to existing structures. Despite its height, the ride's maximum speed of 60 miles per hour, 97 kilometers per hour, does not set a speed record. Other drop towers, such as Drop Tower at King's Dominion, which reaches 72 miles per hour, 116 kilometers per hour, are faster. However, Falcon's Fury is the world's first drop tower whose seats tilt 90 degrees. Although tilting seats were first used by Intamin in 2001 on Acrophobia at Six Flags Over Georgia, their tilt angle is smaller. Reception the initial reception after the ride's announcement was positive. According to Lance Hart, a theme park enthusiast from Screamscape, quote, instead of selling your picture, they should sell baby wipes and clean underwear at the exit, end quote. And the ride would be the most frightening drop tower in the world. The Rob Alvey of Theme Park Review called the ride the world's best drop tower, later ranking it one of the top 14 new attractions for 2014. Dave Parfit and Aunt Arthur Levine of USA Today rank Falcon's Fury in their top 10. Brady McDonald of the Los Angeles Times originally ranked Falcon's Fury in his seventh most anticipated ride for 2014. On an updated list, he ranked it 17th. For safety reasons, construction of Falcon's Fury was done primarily at night. Residents near the park 
uh, complained about noise from the pile driver during the laying of the foundation and complaints about the ride's operating noise continued into August 2014. According to the park and Twitter posts selected by the news media, public response during the soft opening was positive. Total Orlando gave the ride five stars for teenagers and four stars for adults. On Coaster 101, Ashley said that although the restraints were tight, they were comfortable and not as tight as those on other rides, adding, The drop on Falcon's Fury is different from any ride I've ever been, uh, I've ever ridden. The best way I can describe it is that instead of leaving your stomach at the top of the tower, you take it with you to the bottom. According to Florida Trip Guides, the ride was a good addition for the park's attraction lineup, Falcon's Fury is not for the faint of heart. I've ridden dozens of drop towers, but this one is different. Something about facing straight down and falling really makes you th uh, nervous. Robert Niles of Theme Park Insider said that Falcon's Fury and other recent attractions were nearing the extreme of human tolerance. As a result, quote, you're getting to the point uh, where instead of making an attraction more popular by having it achieve some type of record, you're actually limiting the audience for that. Randy Nissenbaum of Bay 9 News called the view from the top of the tower incredible, and although she was nervous, at first she wanted to ride it again. Sue Carlton of the Tampa Bay Times said, It was terrifying and thrilling, and I held on as hard as I could, and yelled and closed my eyes, and after well, afterward stepped off, rubber kneed and exhilarated. For the 2014 season, Busch Gardens Tampa expected attendance to increase by 3 to 8 percent. However, as predicted in June 2014 by IBIS World Research, combined attendance for the second quarter of the year increased about 0.3 percent for SeaWorld Orlando, SeaWorld San Diego, SeaWorld San Antonio, Busch Gardens Williamsburg, and Busch Gardens Tampa. Compared to the same period in 2013, combined attendance for the first half of the year dropped by just over 4%. Busch Gardens Tampa blamed the lack of its anticipated attendance increase partially on Falcon's Ferry delays. References include Tampa Bay Times, Park World Magazine, Bay News 9, Tampa Bay Times, Screamscape, The Virginian Pilot, Park Rumors, SeaWorld Parks and Entertainment, U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, WTSP, The Federal Aviation Administration of the Government of the United States of America. There is currently a Wikipedia investigation into the status of this report. When the report is uploaded to the web by the FAA, this citation will link to it. Project 380286, Permits 1 and 3, the City of Tampa. Associated Press uh, is posted on ABC News. The Washington Post, uh, as represented through the Associated Press again. Attractions Magazine, Bush Gardens Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay Times, Adena Corporation, BGT Fans. Orlando Sentinel, Busch Gardens Tampa Twitter account, Tampa Bay Tribune, Tampa Bay Times, Busch Gardens Tampa Facebook, The Miami Herald, Theme Park Review TPR on YouTube, Busch Gardens and Adventure Island Tampa Florida on YouTube, In the Loop on YouTube, 10 News, The Detroit Free Press, the Los Angeles Times, the website for King's Dominion, Intamin Amusement Rides website, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution as accessed through High Beam Research, the Chicago Ta Sun Times as accessed through High Beam Research, the Morning Call, Screamscape account on Twitter, Park Re Theme Park Review account on Twitter, Hottest Amusement Park tr Attractions 2014, on Travel Channel website.
WTSP, WFLA, Total Orlando, Coaster 101, Florida Trip Guides, LLC, Bay News 9, New York Post, Seeking Alpha, External Links uh, point to Falcon's Fury official website.